Well, this is part two of the realistic STA 64 receiver evaluation. I'm not really going to call it a repair because I guess this part would be a feasibility study to see if it's worth repairing this thing. Well, I pulled a ton of parts out of it. I pulled the shorted output transistors. They're all bad. I mean, look at this one. Emitter to collector. Collector emitter junction is uh, it's a dead short. And it's like that on the other ones. Pulled out the emitter resistors. We'll check them. Pulled out all the lytics off the board. Except for these. These are supply filtering and they're just fine. Let me check these emitter resistors. Well, I knew it already because I checked them in circuit, but open every single one of them. Well, despite being cooked a little bit, I mean, these weren't real bad, but they have signs of stress. They're 100 ohm resistors and they measure right on. Now these got cooked a lot more and they read open, both of them. These unknown oddball diodes, which came out of the short circuit protection, they are a logical OR type thing. So both channels can be fed into one short circuit protection circuit. And um, yeah, this one measures this both directions and the other one is a dead short so these are probably no good on the board there they're showing as diodes so you know they shouldn't be conducting both directions this resistor which was also in the short circuit protection measures almost spot on 1k despite being roasted I bet that thing is a 1k it would seem odd that one would burn or change value to be so close to 1K. And I tested this meter, and it's pretty darn accurate with its resistance measurements. This capacitor, which was like a DC filter for the short circuit protection, which looks like it's been really cooked. 1.5 nanofarads, and it's supposed to be what? 220 nanofarads yeah that's cooked kind of a dumb design though they that capacitor sat right here around all of these um, resistors these power resistors which get rather warm and it just got cooked I didn't pull these caps out but I bet some of these are off value as well this is a 47 microfarad capacitor and it's within spec. I mean these things are probably 20% give or take and it's pretty close and I measured all of these caps. These come off the amp board. They work just fine. They're, they're in well within spec. So I'm going to put them back in. I'm not going to ex exchange them or anything. Probably don't have the parts anyway or the exact values but you know I had to pull some of them off anyway because you know this one was in the way of my screwdriver and this fuse board sat vertical here so I couldn't get my screwdriver in to get the transistors out so I had to pull them anyway so I went ahead and pulled the all of the smaller lytics off the board and like I said these two are just fine so no sense in pulling those. And those are power supply filtering caps. They just didn't have enough room over here, so that's why they're not on the uh, power supply board. It is a direct coupled output stage. Okay, well, now I need to see what else is wrong with this amplifier or this receiver. I need to find out if I'm getting signal from the radio board and the phono preamp and down underneath there is the preamp board or 
tone controls. So, what I can do is all the signal is going to end up in the amplifier. That's obvious. So, what I can do is connect another amplifier to the input here. It's kind of nice to give you little, uh, little test points. There's the right in. E is ground. So I'll connect another amplifier and pick off the signal that's supposed to be fed into this amplifier. In doing that, I'll be able to get a measurement or, you know, get a signal from these boards if they're working. And then I'll have more information on if this amplifier is worth fixing or not. If you do decide to use a music player or an amplifier to inject or extract a signal, I'd recommend setting up this basic protection circuit because there is voltages in here that could damage your music player or whatever. So if this side is to the test equipment, or I should say the device you're testing, this will be either your signal source like a music player or the amplifier if you're extract if you're extracting a signal so what happens here if you accidentally touch a high voltage like the uh, supply rail it'll just get shunted through these diodes and a signal is such a small level it won't even conduct with these diodes so it'll just go right through and the capacitor will block any residual DC and that goes both ways so just kind of a little tip here on a protection circuit if you want to extract or inject signals well let's get this thing hooked up and see what happens okay I have hooked up this amplifier after telling you all about this I did not use that I just took my meter and make sure the there's no stray voltages on that. I didn't want to set all that up for this video. And anyway, I just connected it to this little amplifier input. The outputs go to the speaker and the little 9-volt battery pack here. Now we can see what goes on with this receiver. A little bit of signal out of it. Let's see here. Okay, I'm in AM mode. And I don't take my life lightly. Mortal coil. Well, AM works, but it's pretty weak. Unless I hit a strong station. Then Mike Tyson. I, I'll tell you, it's... Uh, I'll give you a coin toss on that. I, I... Planet. I'm putting... Is it? Yeah, it's. Uh, I would say it's a little weak. A little better when I pulled this out, but I wouldn't consider it good enough. Okay, let's try FM. So Especially after pain. <laughs> 
area is, is doing dentures or replacing the teeth and also happen to teach at the denture clinic at Ohio State so I'm pretty uh, pretty familiar with the denture process but yeah we always get a lot of questions on what to expect with dentures kind of the general denture process for it and what they can kind of Paragon and FM is good it works pretty strong but you know I don't even have an antenna I just have this little cord clip thing I don't know if that shows up it's kind of dark back there however I'm sure the stereo light is out but I'm not getting any multiplex I'm not getting a stereo image at all something wrong with the multiplex circuit the decoder which is probably in this area of the radio board as I call it so yeah something wrong there I don't have the equipment to service that I don't know if I can just use my scope and I really need a service manual okay now I'm going to test the phono preamp stage which is this board right here okay you can test the phono preamp with a music player you just want to turn the volume less than halfway something like that if you can turn the bass down on your music player turn the loudness out turn the bass down the reason for that is because the equalization in the phono stage really boosts up the bass and it'll sound really nasty and muddy okay let's see what happens See, it kind of gets muddy there. Well, the radio has issues. This would have to be repaired. Uh, this sounds fine. Of course, this board needs a lot of parts. This needs a lot of parts. I have really have to find a schematic or I'm stuck with these diodes. They're, I don't know if they're Schottky or Germanium. Probably a lower forward drop so it can detect the small voltage that would develop across the emitter resistors when higher current flows you know I don't know so of course from the last video we know the SCR is fine so that's how it stands with this I'm not so sure it's worth repairing I mean it's got a good preamp though phono and the uh, tone boards just fine a little bit of scratching on the controls that can be sprayed and try as I might I could not find anything in my junk a TIP 3055 works pretty well as far as specs go it's a little bit stronger transistor than these uh, these here what are they they're 2SD313. They're all same sex because it's quasi comp. They're all, you know, they're all the same transistor. And 
One little tip when you're substituting transistors, of course you want the same sex, you know, NPN or PNP. You want to make sure you have at least the same voltage ratings. You know, these are 60 volt, I think. Uh, gain should be in the neighborhood. You have to be careful though because the way they measure gain, you know, they might use a different current value between the data sheets. So, so unless they provide curves, it's kind of hard. And it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Transistors vary from one to the other of the same type and gain. It's just that there are some out there that have very high gain and some that have very low gain that may not work. Uh, transition frequency again it depends on how they measure the you know they might measure one at a certain current and on the other data sheets at a different current so it's kind of hard to figure these things out just looking at the data sheets but uh, a TIP 3055 might actually work just fine in there problem is I can only find one of them I would have to buy um, transistors. I'd have to buy emitter resistors. What was that? Oh, this thing. What happened there is this thing goes to sleep and the output goes high impedance. And that's why we got that hum. So that, that wasn't a sudden short out or anything. But I'll turn that off anyway. Um, yeah, probably a lot of caps for this board. I'm probably going to store this away. I'm not going to do anything with it now. I might, you know, find some parts at some point and, you know, fix it. The worst thing for me is the... The radio board, it's, uh, I need more knowledge and probably gear to tune that thing up. And boards are pretty straightforward and easy. Power supply. And, oh yeah, don't forget I would need to find a schematic to get that thing fixed. Well, this is getting long. I'm going to wrap it up here. And once again, thanks for watching.